Today, I'm going to show you guys the complete tutorial of how the Go High Level calendars work. Now, this is a question a lot of my students have been asking me because it's just confusing. And I agree. When I started using this, I was confused as heck of what the heck, how do I use this calendar system? So I'm going to show you guys how to do all that in this video today. Now, if you don't know who I am already, my name is Jackie. I'm one of the top affiliates in the world for Go High Level, meaning I am able to provide you guys a 30 day free trial instead of the more normal 14 days. And when you sign up to that, I'm able to provide you a free SaaS course to help you start up your SaaS agency in just 24 hours. Yes, I was able to do this with zero experience. I started all this in 2022, July, and now I'm making 10K a month doing this business. And I want you to do that as well. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So first things first, we're just going to go in the calendar settings and we're going to start setting up a calendar from scratch. Now, when you create a calendar, in the newest version, it's going to look something like this. Now, what round robin means, it just means that if you have four team members and let's say a client wants to book in a time for next Monday at 9 a.m. So it's going to show all the availabilities of that 9 a.m. If team member A is not able to make that time, then whenever the client books is going to go to team member B. Now, if team member B can't get to that meeting in that time, it's just going to go to team member C. And it's just going to switch around, go round robin one by one to see if there's a 9 a.m. slot for next Monday. If there isn't, then on the calendar that the client's booking, they won't show that slot at all. What unassigned booking is, is essentially just a calendar that you would just use for one-on-one -on -one meetings for each team members to have their own calendars with their own availabilities. Now, class bookings, you can just think of it as like a group booking where instead of one-on-ones, you want more than one people in the, in the meeting. But if you're working by yourself, you can either go round robin or unassigned. It doesn't really matter. So let's go round robin. And straight off the bat, when we come in, we're going to see there's going to be an add a user. Now, when you see this optimize for availability or optimize for equal distribution, to be honest, I wouldn't really worry about that too much. If you just want a calendar, just use optimize for availability. Let the software do its work. Now go into add user and you're going to select yourself. Now, this might be a bit confusing. If you just started go high level, you probably won't have yourself as a user. And I'm going to show you how to add yourself as a user real quick. Super simple. We're going to go into our software, move my head out of the way, go into settings, and then you're going to go into my staff and in here, you're going to add employee. You type in your name, last name, email, phone number, just select a random password. And that's not really important. And then press save. Now you see that I already have myself as a user. That's why when I select myself, it's already in here. Now you'll see my meeting is also on Zoom. Now I have another video that you can check out above right here of how to connect Zoom to the calendars. So I'm not going to go over that in this video. Now in terms of the calendar name, let's just do test description. You can have it or you don't need it. And the calendar slug. Now this can just be something, let's say one one-on-one -on -one meeting. Something like that. Okay. Then you're going to add logo. Normally you don't really need this. If you really, you don't really need this. If you want, you can put your business name or your face on there. Doesn't really matter. You can change it, the type, and you can change the event color so that you know who booked what. I'm going to press save and continue. And it's going to take you to this next page. Now this is where you're going to start choosing your availabilities. You can either choose your availabilities in here, or you can also mess around with your availabilities in your user section in here. So you just need to go down and then you see there's a user availability and this is where you can set users availabilities from here. But we're going to go into here and this is where you start setting for the calendar. How long do you want your meetings to be for? And if you want any buffer durations between any appointments, meaning if I put zero in here, I can have people book with me back to back. But if I put in a buffer duration of let's say 15 minutes, so essentially that would mean if someone books with me from 12 o'clock to 1230, I'll have a 15 minute buffer duration so that the next session that they're able to book me in will be 1245. And what slot interval means is just every 30 minutes, right? So it's either 12, 30, 12, 1230, 1, 130. You can change that to whatever you want. Appointment per slot just means you only have one appointment per user, you know, appointments a day. You can set max amount of appointments a day. You don't need to if you don't want to. Minimum scheduling notice just means about what is the latest someone can schedule in a meeting with you. For example, if you don't want someone to schedule in last minute, an hour before, because you might have planned something, you want to put 
you know, at least give me one or two hours before. Normally I like to set this on around one day before because I don't like last minute meetings. Date range and duration just means how far ahead they can book in with you. So if I say 14 days, it means that from today onwards, the next two weeks, they're able to book in with me. No one else is able to book in after the two weeks. And then in the office hours, pretty standard, you can just put them in here. Now you're going to go in and press save and continue. Last part, you can add a custom form to the confirmation so that when someone fills out the booking system, they can get taken to a custom form saying, Hey, thanks for booking in. I want you, can you help me put in your details so that I know who this book's from. Now you see, I have a bunch of these forms. You can just put whatever form that you want. Normally it just consists of something very simple, like first name, last name, email, phone number. That's about it. Then you can choose to select an acknowledgement email saying, Hey, we've managed to get your email and you choose who wants to receive this contact, assign user emails. You can have extra emails, but usually these two will do. Keep this on, let the calendar auto confirm your appointment. You can also allow them to add to Google calendar if you wish. And then there's also the reschedule and cancellation buttons that you can have. This is all really nice and handy because all you need to do is toggle these on and off. All these links will automatically get sent to these guys for them to reschedule or cancel if something last minute pops up. What's cool is you can also put a Facebook pixel ID and also custom code to change a bit, bit of the colors. Honestly, I don't really touch it. You don't really need it. So unless you want to be really fancy, don't worry about it. Once they finish submitting the form, you can have a custom thank you message, or you can redirect them to a funnel page as you wish. And once you do all that, you just press complete. Now that's a quick overview of how the calendars work. I'm going to show you guys exactly how to integrate this into your own go high level websites, because it's actually super easy. Now I'm going to go in to one of my funnels and let's just do this random fishing funnel that I have. I'm going to go edit. All right. Beautiful. Now that once we're in the funnel, we're going to press this new, add a column page. We are going to column and we're going to add in an element. And from here, we're going to just scroll down and go into calendar, click on that. And then you just simply select what calendar you want. Now I might want to do like a discovery call and then boom, there it is. It's that easy. You click save and then you preview and it's there. Couldn't be simpler than that. So that is the quick complete overview and tutorial of how the calendar works in go high level. I hope this has helped you. Now go high level is pumping out a bunch of updates all the time, and I'm going to be making videos so that I can make sure everyone is on these updates because I was really confused when I started Go High Level. I was using the new interface and then I was watching all these YouTube videos and tutorials I was made two, three years ago and they had the alter interface. So make sure to click like and subscribe to keep up with the latest tutorials of how Go High Level works. I'll post them all on this channel. But otherwise, I hope this has helped you guys today and I'll catch you guys in the next video.